Hi, this is my third video in helping people study for actuarial exam two, also called the financial math. In this video, we're going to be looking at solving exercise 1.2.2s in Roberman, the sixth edition. Trust fund initial deposit or present value for some future payouts to your children. And here's the way the problem is stated. The parents of three children, aged one, three, and six, wish to set up a trust fund that will pay $25,000 to each child when they reach 18, and then $100,000 to each child when they reach 21. The trust fund earn, earns interest. There's an effective annual interest rate of 10% that's assumed to be compounded annually here. What amount must the parents now invest in the present in the trust fund implicitly to be able to make these future payments? So as we will usually do, we'll draw a number line to help us in our thought process, problem solving, to organize things here. Uh, you've got these three kids of different ages. You might want to put the age up here. You've got the one-year-old, the three-year-old, and the six-year-old. Let's focus first on the six-year-old. The six-year-old will reach age 18 in 12 years. So let's go ahead and mark a 12 on here. Uh, when they reach 18, there's a $25,000 payment that we'll give to them, or $25,000, you know, dollars, euros, uh, pounds, whatever. I'll just put a 25k there for 25,000. And then three years later, when they reach the age of 21, we will give them 100,000. So I'll put 100k there. So that's the payments to the six-year-old. What about the three-year-old? The three-year-old will reach age 18 in 15 years. So at 15 years, we're going to make a $25,000 payment to them. You know, we're ignoring complications like the fact that they don't have the same birthday necessarily. We're not going to worry about that. Then three years later, when they reach the age of 18, to this current three-year-old, we will make a 100,000 payment. Finally, to the one-year-old, uh, they will reach the age of 18 in 17 years. So let's put a 17 on there. Uh, 25,000 to them in 17 years. And then in 20 years, when they reach the age of 21, they will get 100,000. All right. So how do you solve this problem? We want to find the present value of all these future payments. We want to imagine taking these payments and pulling them back in time, yanking them back in time to the present, time zero. To do that, we need to multiply by powers of what's called the present value discount factor. Uh, some people, some books make it look like the Greek letter nu. Some books make it look, it look like the letter V. V is simpler. I'm just going to call it a V. It's 1 over 1 plus the interest rate. Everything here is annual. The interest rate is 10%, so this is 1 over 1.1. 1 .1. It turns out that that equals 0 0.909090 repeating, or if we want to just write 0 0.90 with a bar over it to indicate that it's a repeating decimal. <clears throat> this is the, the, again, present value discount factor. And it's what we would multiply any quantity by, uh, any value one year in the future by, to get its present value. In other words, how much should we deposit right now to, at the given interest rate to attain that future value in one year? And then you multiply powers of this, <clears throat> appropriate powers of this, to pull back any amount in the future like 12 or 15 or 17 or 18 or 20 years from now. So let's first focus on the $25,000 payments. I might accidentally say dollars a lot since that's what I'm used to. What is their present value? Well, you'd take 25,000 times V to the 12th, plus 25,000 times V to the 15th, plus 25,000 times V to the 17th. You can factor the 25,000 out and write this as 25,000 in parentheses V to the 12th plus V to the 15th plus V to the 17th. So that's the present value of the 25,000 payments. How about the 100,000 amount payments? What's their present value? Same concept. Take the 100,000 times v to the 15th, 100,000 times v to the 18th, and 100,000 times v to the 20th. You can factor the 100,000 out and write it like this.
So if I can find this value and this value and then add them together, that will be my final answer for the present value of the entire uh, future payments. It's how much we should invest now. That will be the answer to the question. One nice thing that I notice here, and this is something you should look for on your own, is the second quantity right here is four times v to the third power times the first quantity. If I multiply the first quantity, the this present value by 4v cubed, that will give me this amount. So I can just find this first, then multiply it by that, and then add the results. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's find this first. I'll use my calculator here. All right. Again, the interest rate is 10% or 0.1. 1.1 is 1 plus i. Take the reciprocal of that. There is our value for v, the present value discount factor. Let's go ahead and store that in register 0, the value of v. Now let's start computing this right here. So what is v to the 12th? I take this value and raise it to the 12th power. Let's store that quantity in register 1. I can write these things down as well. Then take v to the 15th. So recall the value of v. Raise it to the 15th power. Let's store that in register 2. And let's recall the value of v again. Raise it to the 17th power. I could store that, but I don't have to. Now add that to what is in register 1 and to what is in register 2. This quantity, 0.7558675, is the value of v to the 12th plus v to the 15th plus v to the 17th. Multiply that now by 25,000. This quantity right here, 18896.688, is the present value of the future 25,000 payments. Let's write that down. 18896.6884 is what it is. I'm now going to multiply that by 4. Times 4. And also multiply it by v cubed. Maybe I should have done my v cubed first. Let's see. Let's store this now. This 75. This light is kind of a pain here. Let's store this in register 1. Again, I could write it down, but I can now recall what's in register 0, which is v, raise it to the third power, and now multiply it times what I just stored in register 1. Times recall 1. There we go. This amount. 56789.44673 is the few, is the present value of the 100,000 payments. Oh, I wrote 10,000 here. I meant 100,000. All right. Add these two amounts, this one and this one, and that will give us our final answer. Let's go ahead and add them. I got the 56 in there already, plus... 18896.6884. Let's go ahead and round our final answer to the nearest whole number. 75686 is what we get, and that is the correct answer. Um, and so you should take the time to think over what we did here. And again, especially focus on this idea of a present value discount factor. We pulled these amounts back in time to the present by multiplying by powers of that discount factor. And we also use this problem-solving strategy that made our work a little easier. And I'll end this video right there.